Why this particular story is not a bigger story uh, leaves me at a loss for words. I know it's a fairly sensitive subject, but however though, and I know too that the researchers may uh, be associating this decline in regard to pesticides and other type of uh, chemicals in the environment. But in any case, it's serious. It needs a little bit more attention than currently it has been given. And I want to allude to basically, if you want to find out more information, go to the uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, which gives some excerpts of the video that they released recently. But in any case, let's go into it on a little bit more detailed level to basically uh, explain why they are as concerned as they are. Now, you see this graph right there. All right, now basically, you see the title of the graph and everything else like that as far as sperm concentrations. And it, it's very basic. It's basically what you call a linear slope. It's predictable. All right, now if you look at that slope, or basically if you want to look at the, uh, the y, uh, y axis intercept, it was 1973. I apologize for the math, but you got to look at this with a little bit of math involved. But whether you know math or not, you'll get the gist pretty fast. All right, so you take that y intercept, basically, uh, it hits the x, uh, the x axis at 1973 at 99 million. I follow that slope down, 47.1 million. Are right, you looking at a decline or uh, basically of that slope for approximately a loss of about 1.36, 1.37 uh, million sperm in concentration per year loss from 1973 to 2011, about 38 years. All right, so you're looking at that drop. How long do you think it takes that slope before it reaches zero? Provided it's not an exponential type graph where there's a uh, uh, hidden asymptote someplace, asymptote someplace uh, to be discovered in the future. How long do you think that'll be before it hits zero? All right, without working out the figures, from the point of the graph to total infertility, uh, which is actually about 15 million, but total infertility, you're looking at 34.49 years to 34 and a half years. But au contraire, when that graph end? 2011. What year is it now? 2017. And provided there's not some sort of curve coming up or some sort of you know lower limit, whatever it comes down to be, that gives us, if you look at 60 years minus, what are you looking about? 28, 27 years before what? Who knows? We all know, so I actually do the research, but it looks pretty bad. Now, keep in mind, in regard to that graph and the drop in sperm concentrations, that has to do with Western civilization. There were some set of limitations where they didn't do as much as far as the Asian continent, where they didn't see the drop in Asia, South America, or Africa. However, though, that's only because the data was not um, readily available in amounts that would satisfy the researchers' um, analysis, so to say. It has to do with geography. It doesn't matter about race, color, or creed. This is a major upcoming storm in regard to infertility that has to do more with geography than it has to do with anything else. And in those geographies, according to the researchers, there may be the organophosphates, the pesticides, and other health factors, smoking, obesity, and so on and so forth. But before I proceed, let us begin. What, 29 years to zero, I said? 28, all right, whatever it comes down to be. I also attempted to contact the university to see if I could work outside what's called standard error and look more for a, basically a nice bar chart with whisker plot or whatever it is uh, that would show the concentration so I can get the mode in regard to the most common uh, amount of sperm concentration in the general population, males obviously, uh, that's currently there to see make sure there's no like weird outliers or whatever it is, which I'm sure they already took care of anyways because it was in regard to um, standard error and not standard deviation. But now, let's go to the video of the researcher himself because he explains it actually the best and I want to bring attention to the university and the researchers because it is their work. So let's cut to that real fast and Sperm proceed. counts declined? Definitely yes. Our international team of researchers screened 7,500 studies for the first ever meta-analysis on trends in sperm counts. From 1973 to 2011, 
we found an alarming decline of over 50% in both sperm concentration and total sperm count among right. men. Now let's go into study parameters to see exactly what they're talking about. Citation title, as you see, is there. Funding, lots of funding. Study participants, as stated, 7,500 studies conducting a meta a regression analysis of 185 studies between 1973 and 2011. Analysis and statistics are all available there. Let's flip to the opening part of the PDF of this study so you can see. All right, now let's go back to the results. To reiterate the words of the researchers, researchers found a 52.4% decline in sperm concentration, a 59.3% decline in total sperm count among men in North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand who were not selected based on their fertility status. In contrast, no significant decline was seen in South America, Asia, and Africa where far fewer studies have been conducted. Remember, that's a study limitation. Doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means it's a study limitation. The study also indicates, and this is the most disconcerting part, when you're thinking about that graph and that slope, is as follows. The study indicates the rate of decline among Western men is not decreasing. So if we're looking at exponential, uh, again, apologize about the math, you tend to have like this or this, and you have the acetope, and basically it never really hits that, uh, where that acetope is along, as far as horizontal acetope is in regard to the Y uh, intercept, or Y axis, whatever it is. And so, you know, you tend to have a balancing off. They're not seeing that. They're seeing a continual linear regression or linear drop in regard to the slope, continuing at, an ex at that pace nonstop. That I find extremely disturbing. The study indicates a rate of decline among Western men is not decreasing. The slope was steep and significant even when the analysis was restricted to studies within the sample collection between 1996 and 2011. All right, now the study cut off in 2011. And before I do any of these videos, I like to be able to see if there's uh, something that confirms that they may be on the right track or wrong track. So I tried to find to see if I could find any detailed information in regard to any current studies this year, 2017, in regard to uh, sperm concentrations to see basically if that slope is going exactly where they say it is on current levels. If that 2011 slope continues to 2017 at the exact same uh, rate, so to say. All right, so basically here's one of the studies. You see the highlight areas. All right, it's still a little higher basically than what they quote, quote, quote. However, by concern, was this was the sperm concentration in the age of men between 18 and 21. All right, keep in mind, we're not talking an age-related decline. People say, oh, the population's older, therefore it's gonna affect the graph. No, we're talking right within that age range of fertility in regard to men. The reason again, to reiterate the reason or hypothesis the reason as they stated here, in doctrine disrupting a detrimental reproductive status in regard to chemicals itself. Again, pesticides, organophosphates, or whatever it comes down to be. Now, as a side note, China. Now, if you see that little uh, slope right there, there in regards to look at section number B and that decline, it's pretty similar. Even though, again, they didn't use uh, China as an example in regards to the study here, it's consistent. And look at the year spectrum in that, 2008 to 2014, and look at the freaking drop. That is just insane. So basically what may be happening in Western countries in regard to geography, not race, color, creed, or whatever, just simply geography, may be uh, being correlated with what's happening in other parts of the world, just that the studies have not been done to elucidate that particular data itself. But to conclude, I wanted to end with the warning uh, in regard to the researcher because again he says it best however in the meantime i noticed a lot of people were celebrating actually celebrating the results of this particular study and the warning of the researcher saying wow we have an answer to overpopulation that's naive because we're talking potentially with endocrine disrupting chemicals organophosphate or whatever the cause is of being hypothesized is creating genetic damage and if you have an uncontrolled slope declining at that current rate, that may be, there may be potentially without, again, an alarmist, a point of no return, so to say. Again, that's an extreme amount, not having any data to support what I'm saying one way or the other outside of the hypothesis 
if we continue that slope and a downward trend to the next 26, 27, 28 years. Again, incredibly intriguing information. I encourage you to research, validate the data on your own, look at the research from the university itself, uh, and again, there may be some hard questions that have to be answered, but that's the whole point, knowing what the question should be so we can actually formulate that answer. I think Einstein alluded to something like that a long time ago. So again, I'll leave with the warning from the researcher, the Ralph Church Channel, signing off. And again, this without being alarmist, it still requires attention. So let's give it a little bit of attention. Ralph Church Channel, signing off. Look forward to seeing you all in seven days. I don't know this information probably doesn't help much, but if you can do anything, you know, try to avoid pesticides, you know, without sounding too off the cuff here, eat organic, whatever it comes down to be organic uh, at this point in time. Seems to be at least part of the solution, definitely not part of the problem. All right, guys, I'll catch you in a bit. See you in seven days. Thank you very much. Bye. Including prenatal chemical exposure, adult pesticide exposure, smoking, stress, and obesity. This study is an urgent wake-up call to investigate the causes of the sharp ongoing drop in sperm count with the goal of prevention.